Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tian Xiao. I am a PhD student from UCLA. And I'm very happy to present one of our latest works called uh, 5G in the Sky, the future of high-speed internet via unmanned aerial vehicles. So this is a joint work between me and my colleagues, uh, Mohammed and Professor Abali. So in recent years, the growing demand for high data rate, low latency wireless applications have driven the demand for the fifth generation wireless technologies. There is also a growing demand for high network capacities, for example, in sports stadiums or in concerts, where you have tens of thousands of users which need wireless access. So people have turned their attention to um, new technology using 5G millimeter wave. So 5G millimeter wave operates in the frequency band above 24 gigahertz, and it ranges all the way up to 100 gigahertz. And this offers many times more available bandwidth compared to 4G LTE. And this provides new opportunity to support uh, high data rate multi-gigabit uh, wireless applications. So 5G millimeter wave also provides the possibility to support uh, new outdoor application scenarios. For example, uh, in a sports game where a huge number of fans wants to do either real-time video streaming or post content on social media. Another example is in a post-disaster scenario where you want to provide high data rate connectivity to, um, to uh, the first responders to assess the real-time uh, disaster situation. So despite all the possibilities of millimeter wave, uh, it also comes with many challenges. Uh, the previous presenters have already mentioned a number of them. So one of the biggest problems with millimeter wave is signal block, uh, signal blockage. And let me explain what I mean. Because it operates on a very high frequency, uh, the signal for millimeter wave is very directional and narrow. So this makes it very easily blocked by obstacles. So for example, if you have a crowd of people standing on the transmission path between the base station and the user device, uh, the human body attenuation causes a lot of degradation to the uh, performance of millimeter wave. And in another example, where you have a building with concrete walls, and this even worsens the performance. So then you may ask, uh, just how much attenuation is being caused by obstacle blockage. So based on prior work and our simulation results, uh, compared to the line of sight scenario, which is the one on the left, when you have obstacle blockage, the data rate drops close to zero. So this is one of the main reasons why millimeter wave has mainly been used for indoor close range scenarios. So now the question is, how can we solve the blockage problem in outdoor scenarios where we want to cover a large area of the users? So to solve this problem, um, we propose in this paper, GigSky. So GigSky is a system, a UAV millimeter wave system designed to address the outdoor blockage problem of millimeter wave signal. In particular, we developed a frequency scanning antenna with low cost and low complexity to relay the signal from ground base stations uh, over an aerial relay to cover a number of users in a certain area. And our system works in the millimeter wave 5G uh, frequency band between 26.5 to 29.5 gigahertz. And this is a commercialized um, 5G millimeter wave band supported by the majority of carriers in the US. So before we dive into the details of our design, let's first take a look at what are the design goals we try to achieve using our GigSky system. So using an example scenario, if we want to cover a number of users uh, distributed in an area, and we want to enable connectivity between them and the remote base station, we can fly our GigSky system over the air to this area. So the first goal we wanted to achieve was we wanted to support multiple users simultaneously with a high data rate connectivity. And to do so, the UAV can relay the signal from a ground base station and generate multiple beams simultaneously to cover different areas on the ground. And our second goal is we want to do this with a low complexity and low cost system. So how do we achieve these design goals altogether? And as uh, the previous presenters have already mentioned, one of the most common ways to do millimeter wave beam forming is to use what is called uh, phased array antennas. So one possibility is we can attach a phased array antenna on the bottom of the UAV so that it can generate multiple beams to different directions on the ground. Um, let me first briefly explain what, uh, how a phase three antenna works. So um, by adding a phase shift to each of the antenna elements, 
the signals that come out of the separate elements can combine constructively in a certain direction, thus forming a directional beam. And this is done so by attaching what is known as a phase shifter to each one of the antenna elements. And the phase shifters are electronically controlled by a central controller. So in order to generate multiple beams simultaneously using the phase ray antenna, we would have to attach uh, multiple RF, uh, RF chains and they have to be connected to each of the phase shifters. And the main problem with this design is that it is very complex and costly. So the next question is, uh, what else can we do to solve this problem? So in our uh, solution, we use what is called a phase a frequency scanning antenna, or FSA. So on a high level, uh, FSA is a passive structure that allows you to steer the direction of a beam in a certain uh, the beam into a certain direction. And the direction of the uh, signal depends on the frequency of the input signal. So on a high level, uh, FSA allows you to do passive beam forming based on the change of the signal frequency. And it doesn't have, it doesn't use any phase shifters or any active components. So it has a very low co uh, complexity in system design. So now that we understand how FSA works, uh, what is an FSA? Let's take a look at its working principle. So the first question is how the beam is actually formed using an FSA structure. So as you can see in this figure on the bottom left corner, uh, when the input signal travels through the FSA structure, it leaks into the air through the radiating slots on the structure, which are the little concaves shown uh, on the figure here. And while the signal travels through the structure, it experiences the different amount of phase shift at each one of these slots. So the, the, the signals can form constructively in a certain direction, forming a beam. So it works in a similar way to a phase wave antenna. You can regard the slots as an array of radiating elements. And with a different phase shift, you can form a directional beam. So this is how the beam is formed for FSA. And this is done passively as the signal travels through the structure of the antenna. So the second question is, um, how, do you do, how do you steer the direction of the beam in different directions? So as we mentioned earlier, the direction of the beam depends on the frequency of the signal. And the, re and the reason behind this is for different frequencies, the signal have a different wavelengths. So when the signal travels through the structure, it will experience a different amount of phase shift at each one of the radiating slots. Thus, it will have a different um, radiating direction for the beam. So what this means is if you have an input signal with frequency F1, it will, be, uh, it will form a beam in a specific direction, say the one, for example. And if you have another input signal with a different frequency F2, it will form a beam in a different direction. And if you have an input signal with multiple frequency channels, F1 and F2, uh, it will generate multiple beams simultaneously in different directions. So now that we understand how FSA works, uh, let's take a look at how we can use it uh, to satisfy our design requirements. And what's more importantly is FSA does all these things passively. And this gives us a very low complex and low cost system design for generating multiple beams. So as we mentioned earlier, uh, our system has two design goals. The first one is we wanted a low cost, low complexity uh, design and FSA satisfies this. The second goal was we wanted to support multiple users simultaneously. And let's take a look at how we can achieve the second goal uh, using FSA. So for example, in an example scenario where you have a remote base station and our gig sky system flying over an area and we want to cover different users on a two dimensional plane. So at the first step, the base station can send to the UAV um, a continuous spectrum of the 5G um, frequency band consisting of multiple frequency channels, for example, F1 to F1. And on the second step, from the UAV to the user, it can use FSA to split those frequency channels to cover different areas on the ground. So as we mentioned earlier, the direction of the beam depends on the frequency of the signal. As the input signal consists of different frequency channels, the FSA is able to split them into different beams of different directions. So users in each of the, under each of those beams, for example, in clusters A, B, and C, will be communicating simultaneously using different frequency channels. 
And this achieves our goal of uh, supporting multiple users simultaneously using multiple beams uh, using a very low complexity one. So now that we understand how we use FSA for the GigaFest system, um, of course, we cannot directly use the existing solutions. So there are a number of design challenges for the FSA antenna structure. Due to the sake of time, I will just quickly go over some of them. First is the existing FSA solutions consume a huge amount of bandwidth when you want to scan a certain angle on the ground. Um, and we wanted to make, achieve a, a big enough scan angle with available bandwidth we have for the 5G spectrum. So to, uh, to solve this problem, we used what is called a slow wave structure. However, the slow wave structure has very low radiation power. So to solve this second challenge, we had to use what is called periodic modulate slot, which is the slot pattern you see in the figure on the right. And the third challenge was we wanted to adjust the shape of this, uh, the beam so that it can cover a large enough user in a certain area. And we were able to do so by adjusting uh, the length, the width, and also the number of slots on the antenna structure. Uh, so now we understand uh, how Gig Sky works. Let's take a look at our uh, initial evaluation results. So we conducted our simulation based on a very common setup for outdoor scenarios, where you have a remote base station with an EIRP of the 60 dBm and the user device with a receiving antenna gain of 10 dB and a noise floor of negative 89 dB. And then we have our GigSky system, which relays the signal from the ground base station to um, the user using a single frequency channel of 100 megahertz. So first, let's take a look at the beam steering performance. Uh, on the x-axis is the different frequencies supported by our system. And the y-axis are the directions of the beam corresponding to those different frequencies. And as you can see, as um, we increase the frequency, the direction of the beam increases uh, linearly with the change in frequency. And in general, we are able to achieve um, a scan angle of approximately negative 30 degrees to positive 30 degrees. So in summary, this guy achieves a total scan angle of about 60 degrees using the three gigahertz available bandwidth. Uh, next, let's take a look at the radiation pattern of the antenna. So the x-axis in the figure is angle of the beam and the y-axis is the gain of the antenna. As we talked about earlier, the different frequencies have different um, angles for the beam directions. So here we just use four sample frequencies. And as you can see from the radiation pattern, the gain of the antenna uh, ranges from um, 10 to 14 dBi. And the width of the each beam is around 10 degrees. Um, the 3 dB beam width is around 10 degrees. So uh, this satisfies our initial uh, requirement. But let's take a look at how much data rate we can actually, actually achieve based on uh, this antenna gain. So we adjusted uh, the position of the UAV in our simulation so that it's within different, different, uh, different distances from the uh, ground base station and the ground users. So in the figure on the right, the, um, the horizontal axis is the distance between the UAV and the base station in terms of meters. And the, y, uh, the vertical axis is the distance between the UAV and the users. The different color plots in the middle just represent the maximum channel throughput we can achieve using a 100 megahertz channel. And as you can see, for the majority of the positions, we are able to achieve the maximum channel throughput of around 400 Mbps, even when the UAV is around, um, even when the UAV is 100 meters from the user and around 500 meters from the remote base station. So in summary, uh, based on these, these results, we think that Big Sky is able to solve the millimeter wave blockage problem based on our initial simulation results. So now we talked about Big Sky. There are also some works, uh, previous works, which tried to address the problems in these areas. The first area is a millimeter wave blockage. So a number of works uses uh, different technologies such as smart surface or signal reflection. But these works, mainly focus on indoor close range scenarios. And our work targets outdoor uh, scenarios with a large um, area of coverage. And the second area of work, which is UAV aided millimeter wave communication, uh, most of the work in this area focuses on general optimization problems. And among the number, very few limited number of work which actually test uh, uh, or implement the actual working system, 
they assume the use of phase three antennas. And as we mentioned earlier, uh, it is very costly and um, complex in terms of design and not very suitable to be used on a UAV system. So in summary, in this work, we present Geek uh, Sky, which is an aerial relay system to solve the 5G millimeter wave blockage problem in outdoor scenarios. And we developed a low cost, low complexity uh, FSA system. And some simulations, our Geek Sky system enables around 400 MPPS to multiple users simultaneously in around 30 different frequency channels. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much.